Many jobs just wouldn't measure up without this trusty tool. The spring-driven retractable tape measure was invented in the middle of the 19th century, but it didn't really become popular until the 1940s. Today, no handyman would be without one, because without it, they wouldn't be, well, very handy. Measuring tapes take the guesswork out of any job, and if you don't use one, you'll soon see the error of your ways. They start with a three-dimensional computer design. A machine then pulls hardened strips of steel five at a time across a network of rollers that coat them with paint primer. The next series of rollers paint the strips. After the paint dries, it's time for a rewind to cue them up for printing. Printing cylinders roll measurement markings onto the steel strips. They use black ink for millimetres and red for metres. Next, they heat the measuring tape. This will allow a protective plastic film, applied by this machine, to stick to it. Rollers then give the tape a concave contour, so that it can be extended rigidly. The press is slow to a crawl for a second, and a blade cuts the tape to the correct length. At the same time, it punches a hole for the end hook. They rivet the hook onto the tape. Next, another machine rolls up steel to make springs. The spring will enable the measuring tape to retract into the casing. They clip the end of a spring to an automatic winding machine. A worker places the lower half of the tape measure's casing into position. The machine rewinds the steel spring to transfer it to the casing. They lubricate the spring with a little oil and then install the control brakes that will lock the tape in place when measuring. Assembling the rest of the casing is a snap. They screw everything together. They attach the measuring tape to the spring and this job is done. Time to test that spring action. Some longer measuring tapes are made from glass fibres, partly because they're lighter. They pull multiple strands of glass through a tub of white liquid plastic and they stick together. The fibres then enter a machine that coats them with more plastic, melted down from hard pellets like these. This transforms the glass fibres into a strong yet flexible tape, the type that's commonly used for surveyors' tape measures. A computerised printer transfers measurements to the tape, a metre a second. Lights illuminate the tape so a camera can check for printing defects. A worker double checks the print job and also examines each tape for accuracy. Some tapes are more accurate than others because standards vary, depending on the industry or country they'll be sold to. She grades each tape and marks it, so it can be tracked back to the operator. A laser then moves over the tapes to check the accuracy level again. If the reading is off by even a few thousandths of a millimetre, then the measuring tape is rejected. Winding a survey's tape is a manual job. They don't install a spring system on them because that would make them too heavy. After winding, they cut the tape and fasten the end hook to it. As you can see, it takes many steps to make a measuring tape. It's a lengthy process, in more ways than one. 